Welcome. I've set up an environment here to demonstrate my uh, macro, Coaster Maker 3. Coaster Maker 3 actually extrudes uh, text, both circular and flat, and I'll go through that here in a second. Uh, once you have established where your macros directory is, which can be done in FreeCAD, in macros, uh, you'll either, in my case, I actually created a directory for this, so it would be a nice clean demo, but normally you have other macros in there. I copied the Maker 3 and the support. Uh, it uses the dialog that I created. It just makes it really easy to add items to the uh, dialog. It's very simple. Uh, I'll show you that uh, at the end. But with those in place, you're ready to run the macros. But to make this even easier, because I, I made the macro rerunnable, we're going to uh, add a button on the uh, t top here. In fact, you can see it here. It hasn't been removed yet from uh, my cleanup. So, now that we have this in place and we have this, one last thing I'm going to do is to um, create myself an additional directory to put my output files to. And that's so that they're nice and clean. And uh, I can go ahead and copy that now since I'm going to use that here in a minute. So I close this out. And I go to Tools customize. only have to do this one time. And we go to macros. And you may have some in there already, but you want to find my coaster maker. Give it some menu text that makes sense. And uh, I like to pick a pixel map that uh, is distinctive, which I've been using that one. And you add that, so now you have it created there. Under toolbars, you go to global, and on the left side here, you select macro. You can see your macro in there. You find it, you click it, and you should be able to hit the right arrow between the two windows and have it move over, but you cannot do that unless there is a toolbar that's been defined. So you have to come in here and create a new toolbar with a new button, and we're just going to call this text extrusion. And now we can add it in and close. Now it won't appear up here normally uh, until you have changed to some other state. So there we are. We have it. We're ready to go. If I go ahead and click it, it doesn't run. So I'm going to restart my, uh, my free cat here. Hold on a second. Yes, there we go. Okay, so now we have ourselves the form. Uh, I'm going to turn off the Create Coaster to start with and just click OK so we see what we come up with. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, and here's the text that was just by default uh, put out there. And at the same time, it, it saved the state that uh, I no longer want my coaster. So when I go, uh, go into it next time, I'll have to change that again. And with my text in place, I'll go over the structure that it created real quick. You got your print, which is anything that you might want to export. The compounds, which are the various pieces, and the uh, individual pieces that are made up. The shapes are underscore, whereas the extrusions are just the plain. You can see all of the word, the letters of the word here. And so you can find any component that's been generated very quickly. You're most interested in the print group. So with this in play, let's take a look at these uh, parameters real quick. We have the top text, which runs across the top here uh, clockwise. We have the centered text, which is centered within the center of the uh, material. And we have the bottom text, which runs counterclockwise along the bottom. Now this binding angle, which is for the top, which uh, controls the angle. If you were to have 180, it would be flat across from, you know, just across the top. If you go past 180, it will rotate to into the bottom, always keeping it centered. Uh, so let's go ahead and do, uh, demonstrate that by using a binding angle of uh, 210 degrees and see what that produces. And 
it just looked like it kind of flattened it out. Didn't see a lot of change there. Um, things are a little bit more spread out. Let's try something more dramatic. Let's go to 230 degrees. Put 15 degrees on either side, bringing it down. There we go. See? And so you have control over how that binding angle uh, controls things. A reasonable binding angle, 180 is flat across. We want it to be slightly up, so let's try 150. And everything else we got will look pretty good, I think. Okay, so we're back to what we started with. I uh, just wanted to quickly show you how you tweak everything. Now let's go ahead and look at the generated output. So I'm going to come out here and start with, uh, it, when you first start, this hasn't been set. I will cr uh, create a directory for my output, so I will set that to change it from my working directory to there. Uh, yes, now I do want to generate a coaster. It uh, hasn't been generating files up until now because I haven't. And when I say yes, now this takes a little bit longer because it's going to uh, actually create an object and do engraving, and so there's more objects created, but uh, in the end it actually has a useful product. It's great for promoting your business or uh, the event that you're at. Uh, it's just a coaster. Uh, it, it's uh, well made. I like to use glow in the dark because uh, that's kind of cool, but uh, here's what it looks like. you got a bottom of one material. You've got a second material that makes up the actual uh, coaster itself, and then you've got the text uh, here. In addition, all of these have been output, the STL files that are ready to be imported straight into a slicer. So we'll bring up slicer and uh, import those real quick. I just grab all three of them at once and drop it and say yes. And now I select the object and set my filaments. In my case, the back wafer which is white is number five. The uh, text is number four, which is black. And the coaster bottom, or the coaster itself, is three, which is glow in the dark in my case. And I have myself a good looking three material print that's quick and easy. If we slice it, Okay, and now we can take and look at the uh, exact way in which it prints on the preview here. It starts out with the white for three layers, then it hits the glow in the dark, grows up, starts filling in the backing, throws in some black. It's running two colors right or two uh, materials right now, and then it finishes off with just the glow in the dark. A uh, nice little short print. Um, total time it would take is uh, looks like about an hour and 26 minutes to print this. Uh, I actually don't think it takes quite that long, but uh, that has a short uh, stack for the purge pile, and you're ready just to send that to the printer. So that is how I have taken care of, through one little click of the button here, all of the various uh, components. This could be rerun as many times as you'd like. If you were, let's go ahead and close all and create a new project and click the button. And in this case, what we'll find is that it uh, adds it to the project that I'm within. So you can do that uh, for a set of text that you'd like to embed in a project without having to copy and paste it into it. Uh, just as a quick little note. Um, other than that, uh, I pretty much have covered what I wanted to in this video. I'll do more deep dives and stuff if people are interested uh, on how it was created uh, as far as the macro and the development environment I'm using. But uh, I hope that this uh, Macro actually is valuable to people, and uh, at least you enjoy making coasters, if nothing else, and exercising your multi-materials unit, which is why I created this in the first place. Uh, have a good day.